So in 35 places where social mapping has indicated that HIV and STI risk and transmission is likely to, or known to be high, we support uh, programs that are designed by those site committees. Um, one of these, the a uh, couple of the sites are in urban settlements of Port Moresby where more than 50% of women sell sex and more than 40% of men pay for sex. But we don't pick out the sex workers or the clients of sex workers. We work with the communities um, through those site committees um, that develop activity plans and are funded by grants from the Timber Life Program. We also have supported a leadership development and mentorship program for these young people. Um, those committees have mobilised other young people to try and create a so-called common <coughs> culture in a country where 99% of people in a census will say they're Christian and where there are very, very strong, strongly influential pastors who may oppose this approach. So it's the young people who do it themselves. We, we don't get out there. Along the Highlands Highway, which has been identified as a very high-risk setting, um, here's a couple of examples of site communities. One is at Yumi Market in Morrowbay Province, where a lot of trucks stop, um, passenger minibuses, and where there is um, sex for sale, drugs for sale, alcohol for sale. And um, John would know the World Trade Centre Market in Baroka, uh, which is also fairly infamous uh, for having just about everything to sale. There's evidence that this approach is working. Um, in 2006, a survey along the highway, Highlands Highway found that 62% of truck drivers and almost 100% of military personnel reported using a condom during the last time they paid for sex. <coughs> Consistent use was lower, between 33 and 69%. And among women who sell sex, two-thirds of highway base and three-quarters of non-highway base women used a condom <coughs> during the last sex. This yellow thing is a condom dispenser that is dangles from a tree. Language can be a big barrier. In Tibet, when we started working with sex workers and their clients, um, most of the information materials available were in Chinese. Um, based on an earlier experience in uh, another part of Tibet, we helped develop a whole range of innovative written materials that used a combination of images and a what's called a spoken Tibetan, which is written and that less educated Tibetans um, can understand and read. And these cater for different, for men, for women, for sex workers, for truck drivers, tour guides, etc. Okay, I'll take a breath. <laughs> And my colleagues will sigh because the last part of this presentation um, tracks our experience over 10 years in what is our longest standing HIV program in Laos. My colleagues will sigh because they all say I talk too much about Laos. But it is a 10 year program that began with a partnership with the Lao Youth Union building their capacity in HIV programming and planning and developing trust and respect in what is still a communist country. Um, youth HIV strategies were developed both nationally and in every province in the country. We supported a network of hundreds of village youth volunteers here, and there's two young females in a rural village, um, in four provinces. But after five years, in a country with a very concentrated sexual epidemic, and an overall prevalence of only 0.1%, we wondered whether this really was a very effective way of addressing the epidemic. So we also began working with mobile young people, including young soldiers and police, who were the only NGO uh, able to work directly with the police and the military, both female and male. We continued to work with these young female, um, these young service women, and also long distance truck drivers. We have a three-year HIV prevention program, which is also a settings approach. Um, it's at the Lansdowne Mineral Gold and Copper Mine, which is owned by the Melbourne-based company Oxiana. It is the largest private <coughs> employer in Laos, 
with more than 3,000 employees, most of whom are male. And it includes the surrounding district where many of the mine workers, of course, live. Well, quite rightly, a lot of attention had been given to the vulnerability of young women. Perhaps not att enough attention had been given to the sexual attitudes of young men. So we began to work more specifically with young men, recognising that it's usually men, not women, who determine when, how often to have sex, what kind of sex, and whether a condom is used. And it's generally men, more than women, uh, who have multiple sex partners and therefore more opportunities tr to transmit HIV. This is a survey I referred to earlier. It included a quantitative survey with a sample size of 800 and 28 focus group discussions. We found that men were sexually active from an early age, 25% of them before they turned 16, and by the age of 21, almost 100% of unmarried men were sexually active. They had a median of two female sex partners in the previous six months. 10% reported having had sex with a man during the previous six months, of whom three in four also had sex with a woman during that period. 11% um, reported ever having had anal sex with a woman, and a similar proportion with a man. So we were funded by a number of donors to train and support up to 300 uh, young male peer educators. They are trained in a broad range of topics, some of which are not specifically related to HIV. Um, we're trying to expand this more into an adolescent health program, so we're soon to be including, for example, a module on road safety. More young Lao men die in road accidents than from AIDS. We have funding specifically for men who may be at higher risk, for example, gay and transgender men who may have multiple sexual partners, and we've trained three groups of peer educators. We found through our studies that some men sell sex, both to men and women. Most of these men are young, uh, heterosexual, from other provinces, not from local, <coughs> and with low levels of education. Some work like their female counterparts in massage parlors, bars, beer shops, and hotels. We had to ensure that there was privacy, confidentiality, and we had to modify the, our usual training times to fit in with the kind of work that they were doing. Last year, to see whether this uh, these large number of peer educators were remaining engaged and active, um, we found that 75% of 48 randomly selected peer educators had conducted at least some kind of prevention activity within the previous six months. The Labour government then asked Burnett uh, to conduct an HIV prevalence study and a behavioural study. And this was funded by the US Centers for Disease Control. Large sample size, 540 men. The questionnaires were confidential and they were filled in on these handheld computers. No identifiers uh, were used except barcodes that would allow these young men to go on and receive their results at the hospital. We took saliva samples for HIV testing with Monosuro. 5.6% were HIV positive. This is the highest prevalence in any population group in Laos. And of the 30 HIV positive men, 14 reported having sex with a woman in the previous three months. More men in the sample reported being primarily sexually attracted to women than to men. And 40% of the sample had had sex with a woman at least once in the previous three months. So this study, I think, illustrates a, a fairly intense sexual network in BNTR. And you could say at the hub are men who have sex with women and men. Six out of a hundred of them are infected with the virus. You can see they have sex with female sex workers, with other women, their girlfriends, their wives, um, they have sex with transgender, they have sex with gay men. And so focusing on this group is important, but it's also challenging because who are they? Um, as a test, our project officer, Pansamai, um, through word of mouth, was able, in a very short period of time, to recruit 25 young volunteers 